the focus to derive the satisfaction with what we do. So thank you, Sunita, for being here, and she's going to speak to us. Forgive me, this is new to me, all this. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to a 1987 recording of the Shankar Concerto for Sitar and Orchestra, composed by Ravi Shankar, played with the London Symphony Orchestra. We lost him earlier this month. We mourn his passing, but we celebrate the divinity he has left with us. Music is the hardest kind of art. It's not something that you can just put up on a wall and wait for passers-by to look at it and enjoy it. It's communication. It's hours and hours of practice, hours being put into a work of art that may last for a few moments, but if done well and if really appreciated, then stays in your hearts forever. Having said that, I attended a concert last night a little Christmas concert in Bandra. And everything that I wanted to say together to today paled into oblivion. All I could think of was the power and the serenity of that moonlit night, the audience holding candles up in the sky, and applauding those musicians, warm and long. And I knew that this was the reason I had taken this up as my life's work. Music for me is what takes life from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Somebody once said, without music, life is a mistake. I tend to agree. There are long hours of practice. And as Bob Marley said, when the music hits you, you feel no pain. But when you're practicing, there comes a moment when you hit that perfect note. And you believe me, even if it's only for a second, you can touch the sublime. And that's what makes it all worth it. Now, that connection I feel with my audience. There is no substitute to being on stage and listening to people, singing their heart out with you. And the look of sheer joy and anticipation on their face is what makes me realize that I'm in the business of making people happy. That was my goal, and that always will be. In the words of my inspiration, my idol, Billy Joel. I think music in itself is healing. It's an explosive expression of humanity. It's something we are all introduced to and then touched by. No matter what culture we come from, everyone loves music. Yes, everyone loves music. We appreciate it or play it or perform it, depending on our interests and abilities, either as a career or as a hobby. But the essential thing is, as Mona rightly said, to focus on what truly inspires you, to recognize and acknowledge your assets and limitations, and follow the path that suits you the most. This is the key to true satisfaction and success. When making music, it's important to, to be true to oneself. You have to have your values intact. You have to have your integrity. Music has also been an outlet for me to express my social views, things that I've always wanted to share with people, things that I feel strongly about, social issues, substance abuse, domestic violence, gender issues. But you have to want to do music. Follow music if you cannot see yourself doing anything else in life. 
up until quite late in my career. I started at about 16 professionally. Of course, I was in the second standard when I started right here. But I often had people coming and saying, oh, you do music. What else do you do? <laughs> so it took many years for them to accept and acknowledge the fact that I actually did it for a living. Today, it's quite different. Today, you have a lot more opportunities. Music performance can actually make you make ends meet. You can have a living. You can support yourself. You can get a house. Depending on your musical ability, you could either choose the highest pinnacle of technical brilliance, you could do Western classical music, you could do Indian classical music, or you know what, you can just write a song and sing it. I mean, after all, our heartthrob Elvis Presley said, I don't know anything about music. In my line, you don't need to. <laughs> anyway, this brings us to the broad categories that we have in terms of choosing music as a profession. There are essentially three categories. You have your poor, struggling musicians. I mean, music wasn't always a very lucrative profession. We had to have the patronage of royalty. Today, you have to have corporates and industrialists with a passion for music, without whom it's not possible to make music, really. You have the buskers on the street, who sometimes have breathtaking talent, but they have nothing to do. So they just sit over there and they play music, on the streets, on the subways. Then you have your, the middle-income ones, who are struggling between working during the day, doing music in the night. And then you have the rich and famous who have the luxury to dictate how much money they want to make, where and how they want to make it, sometimes at the cost of musical greatness. And then you have a special category. These are the icons. They're the ones that truly stuck to their identities. And by sheer talent, dedication, and a constant stream of prolific music being churned out over the years, becoming icons to be cherished, revered, and admired for their entire careers, thus achieving wealth, fame, and respect, all within their lifetime and sometimes beyond. Here are a few examples. Sid Vicious, the world's worst musician, but one of the most popular rock stars. <laughs> Whitney. Okay. Now what you see here is Adele holding a whole bunch of Grammy Awards, which take you, takes you to the business of music. The business of music takes many, many forms. You could have a, a recording contract where you release albums, then you take your music onto the road, you tour all over the country, maybe outside. You could become a sessions musician for TV commercials, for feature films. And today you can get into the ringtone business, which just rings and rings and rings, and there's no end to it. But it's burst forth with a vengeance and a great source of income. But if you're going to be doing all of this, then I think a certain amount of management is necessary. I mean, to keep your sanity, if you if you don't want to be a mix of a businessman and an artist, then you have to have somebody looking after it for you. Something that I never really did. I, in those days, I couldn't really trust anybody to look after my work. I, I did everything. I was the good cop and the bad cop, which is very difficult. But today you have institutions, you have corporations, and they actually scout work for you, and that makes it all the more worth it. Who is a professional musician? Songwriters, producers, instrumentalists, vocalists, lyricists, DJs. I mean, you could even take up music as a teaching profession. Here are a couple of, image of images of recording studios and, and record labels, and that happens to me by daughter Maya. She doesn't, know, she doesn't know what she's doing, but she's entering into a field which I believe is just going to take her to another level. But everybody wants to be a rock star. And the elements that define a successful career and performance are often overlooked by the competitive nature of the industry. Today, because of the reality shows, I mean, the focus has shifted from being a creator of a lifetime of good music to just getting 15 minutes of fame and subsequently hours of disgrace and shame in front of billions of viewers. 
all just to increase the TRP of a reality show and nothing to do whatsoever with the outcome of the career of the contestants. So we need to really broaden our outlook, I think, in this country. The, 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 the point that I want to kind of end with today is we need to look outside. If you ask anybody abroad about Indian music, they'll say Ravi Shankar, or they'll say Bollywood, or they'll say A.R. Rahman. But that's because Ravi Shankar took the bold step of taking his treasury of knowledge and art and threw it open to the Western world, integrated it, and created magic. Everyone wanted a piece of him, from the Beatles to Sting. We need to change our goals. We need, we need, to, we need to look at the crop of young performers today. They seem to have the humility to get a certain amount of classical training, Indian classical training, and yet they are exposed to the entire Western repertoire, and they're out there in their mini skirts and their leather jackets, singing those little uh, intricate intonations and murkis, and R&B licks with equal elan. And that is what I'm talking about here. This is the bunch of people, probably the next generation, which is going to produce that Indian Michael Jackson or that Indian Madonna or that Indian Sting, which everybody is constantly asking about. But only if they are original and if they are unique and if they have something to offer of themselves, not trying to be somebody that they are not. How are we doing on time? We good? Okay. So as Sting says, be yourself no matter what they say. Essentially, ladies and gentlemen, there are no shortcuts. It is a difficult profession, and the only thing that's really going to get you anywhere is your own conviction. Because when you're going to do music as a business, you are going to face that harsh reality, that constant conflict between creativity and commerciality. And then you'll end up compromising. But that's okay. You can do your special pet projects on the side and do what you need to do to earn your money. As long as you know what your USP is, with your devotion, your commitment, your patience, your perseverance, you can make the music business your own. Be an artist. It's, it takes a lot more focus than being a technically brilliant musician. You may have to look for other sources of income before you actually achieve your musical goals. I have friends who work in an office during the day, give drum tuitions in the evening, and play in a club at night. Do it. If you hit the jackpot and you happen to have a musical career, fantastic. Otherwise, your struggle continues. But if you have that ache, if you have that yearning, if you really, really want to do music, please do it. Otherwise, you will never find true peace. Thank you. <laughs>